All right, welcome back. So, <clears throat> sorry I've been away for a little while. We moved, and in case you couldn't tell, there's a new background, so that's why. It's because we moved. <clears throat> we also downsized a lot, so the only real place in the house for my computer and desk are in the kids' bedroom. So that's where this is getting recorded from now on. Anyway, I wanted to do a video on some more advanced Emacs configuration, specifically the most advanced thing that I have in my configuration, <clears throat> and how you can sort of replicate that process for making your own more advanced configurations. So <clears throat> let's talk about what this is doing. So the mxrgrep command lets you search for text <clears throat> in a lot of different files. So it stands for recursive grep, but <clears throat> essentially what you say is something that you wanna look for and <clears throat> I'm gonna look for the string tail q underscore for each. In files matching wildcard star dot h, so <clears throat> anything ending in dot h, and in user include. And if you do that, <clears throat> it searches through them all and finds all of these matches. And it's pretty convenient, right? I used to sort of go to a shell and type the command, but it's kind of nice to have Emacs just sort of guide you through it. <clears throat> and additionally, it has this nice feature that if you hit enter on one of these lines, it'll take you to that point, right? <clears throat> and you can actually cycle through all of these. Once you've hit enter on the first one, you can hit meta G and then meta N as in November, and it'll take you to the next one. <clears throat> and you can see up here that it's actually scrolling the buffer up there as I do this, right? <clears throat> so, that's kind of neat, really. I use that if I'm looking through code and I want to see where a variable gets used. <clears throat> There's lots of different things that you can use this for, and uh, I like it. However, the part that I don't like is actually having this split into two separate windows. <clears throat> and. Uh, the reason why is I want to just go to, I would like it if it, when I, you know, hit enter in this buffer on one of these lines, that it went to that error, but it also, <clears throat> whoops, but it also made that the only buffer, right? I don't want to see the overview buffer when I'm searching for things because I can get back to it really easily, right? I can just, whoops, I hit enter twice. That's what happened there. I can get back to it really easily, right? By just doing that. <clears throat> and I wanna have more context around that file, you know? <clears throat> so, when you run into an issue like this, where Emacs isn't doing something exactly how you want it to do, the first thing to do is figure out if there's a customization option, right? If somebody, the whoever designed that part of Emacs thought, hey, people might want to have it done a different way, and there's like a variable you can set or something like that. <clears throat> and so, Generally, the way you can search through sort of all of the documentation, right? So if you type Control-H-R, that'll take you to 
the Emacs documentation. And if you scroll down, it'll show you sort of <clears throat> the top level nodes in this documentation, right? Like important general concepts, fundamental editing concepts, text changing commands, major structures of Emacs, and then advanced features, recovery from problems and appendices. So <clears throat> it also has this detailed node listing, which <clears throat> so inside of all of these are more nodes, right? So there's point, echo, area, mode line, menu bar. <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you scroll down here to the detailed node listing, it has these in here as well, right? <clears throat> and then anything that's underneath like point will also be somewhere farther down in this buffer. So what I like to do is I like to, you know, figure out which major mode I'm in, right? And if you type control H M, <clears throat> then information about these minor modes follows the major mode info is right here. And then it says grep mode is defined in grep.el. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's what mode I'm in and that's the mode where I'm likely to have documentation that would tell me if I could customize anything. So if we go back to this top level Emacs node and just search for grep, you can see here it's got this section on searching with grep. And <clears throat> you can see that the rgrep command is listed in here. And if you read this section, it should tell you sort of anything that you could customize that would affect this behavior. <clears throat> it also says that this is a uh, <clears throat> sub-mode of compilation mode, or it's based on compilation mode. <clears throat> and there's a couple things uh, you can set, like the, the grep save buffers variable. <clears throat> If you have unsaved buffers, it'll be like, hey, do you want to save this before we do this search? Because you might be searching in some buffers that you already have open and you want your modified changes to be searched instead of your unmodified changes. <clears throat> so you can read this and <clears throat> I read this. Um, I also read the documentation on compilation mode. So if you go up one, if you type U, that'll take you to the next like highest node in info. <clears throat> and you can read this documentation on compilation mode. There is also <clears throat> the Windows section, which has a whole subsection on how Emacs picks a window for displaying a buffer, <clears throat> right? And I do actually have some customization in that domain. So if we go to my .emacs file, you can see, where is it? Display buffer base action. And what this says to do is essentially, if you're trying to display, it tells Emacs, if you're trying to display a buffer, reuse the window that is already displaying the buffer if there is a window that's already displaying the buffer. Just switch to that window if I've already got the buffer open. Otherwise, display it in the same window that I'm currently in. And you would think that compilation mode slash grep mode would follow this, but it doesn't. So <clears throat> now you're in sort of a pickle. Right. The next thing you can do after this is look at the source code. If you've searched the documentation, you've done everything you can think there, you've searched the internet and there doesn't seem to be a solution there either, <clears throat> then you can start reading the source code. <clears throat> so reading the source code is kind of the last thing that I want to do, but <clears throat> Sometimes you have to, you know. Sometimes you gotta read the source code and modify it a little bit 
if you want your program to do what you want it to do. <clears throat> so let's go back to our grep mode buffer. And <clears throat> a very useful feature of Emacs is the control H K key binding. And what that will do is <clears throat> you hit the key that you want more information on, right? Hit the key that you're normally hitting. And so in my case, that'll be enter. And it'll tell you what function that command, that key is actually running, right? <clears throat> so you can see here it says, ret translated from return runs the command compile go to error, right? <clears throat> and it's an interactive compiled Lisp function in compile.el. Now, if you hit enter here, it'll actually take you to the definition of this function. Okay, so control H K, super useful. <clears throat> All right, so now that we're in here, what we really wanna do is just remember what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to get the display buffer to, we're trying to get the displayed buffer to show up in the same window. Now, this might be very hard, but there might be like an easy way that we can get around this. And the reason why I think there might be an easy way to get around it is that if I go back to the place where I found one of these tail queue for eaches, <clears throat> if I hit meta g meta n, that will just take me to the next instance without splitting the window off. So one thing that we could do here is we could type control H K meta G meta N and <clears throat> see that this runs the command next error. Okay, so maybe if we just bind the next error key, next error function to the enter key, it'll do what we want to, right? So <clears throat> the way, and I always forget how to do this, so once I've done it once, I just look up how I did it before and then modify it for my particular needs. But if I go to, let's go to hooks, and it's this define key function that we really want. <clears throat> and let's copy that little instance, and then let's go to our scratch buffer, okay? So the scratch buffer, <clears throat> is where you put little snippets of ELISP code that you want to evaluate so that you can use it. Maybe you'll use it a bunch later, but you need a space to sort of test these things out, right? So if we paste this, and <clears throat> if you look at the structure, right, we're gonna do the grep mode map instead of the shell mode map because we're talking about grep mode. And in this little quotes, we're just gonna type ret because that's the key that we want to bind. And then the function that we wanna do is not next line, but next error. Okay, so if we hit control X, control E here, and then go back to our grep buffer, it doesn't do anything. It still doesn't do exactly what we want. So we really do need to read the source code here. Something funky is going on. <laughs> but there's a chance that there's a way to fix this easily, right? Sort of hack our way into having a <clears throat> having this do what we want it to do. So <clears throat> let's go back, do our control HK. Compile go to error. Let's find that in compile.el <clears throat> and uh, look at this source code. So <clears throat> we're trying to, we're, we wanna find the part that's actually displaying the buffer. Okay. And <clears throat> there's some stuff about like event and uh, like compilation buffer dash P. A general like convention in ELISP is things that end in dash P are yes or no questions. And <clears throat> the dash P stands for predicate, which is sort of like a fancy logic term for is it 
this thing, is this thing true or not? <clears throat> and you're asking, is the current buffer a compilation buffer? And if not, <clears throat> then it'll say not in a compilation buffer. So, and then we're getting some text properties, dired other window. Another useful key binding is control H F. So that'll say, you know, describe the function, dired other window. And <clears throat> this function edits directory dir name, like dired, but selects in another window. So I don't think that's what we're, what we're looking at or what we're trying to, to get happen. It might be because, you know, we're looking at if it's a compilation directory or something, then it's going to pull it up in another window. But that's normally not what's happening when we're running grep. So it looks like if it's not, if that's not the case, then we're going to set this compilation current error to the current point. And then we're gonna go to this next error internal function. So we type control H F there, then we can see that this is defined in simple.el. And you can see that it's nice, most of these functions will have a little mess or string at the front that describe what they do. And this says visit the source code corresponding to the next error message at point. So we're probably on the right track. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we're doing this like fun call next error function, which might be what we want to do. So <clears throat> what is this fun call, right? If we do if we do control H F on that, call first argument as a function. Okay, so if we type control, whoops, control HF here, it's not bringing it up even though we're on top of it. So we type next error function, it's gonna say no match. Okay, so <clears throat> the thing here is that Emacs Lisp variables are sort of twofold. They can either be functions, they have a function component essentially, and they have just a regular variable component. But that regular variable component could also hold a function, sort of like pointers to functions in C, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So maybe if we type control HV, that pulls it up automatically. And it's a variable, since its current value is nil though, so another thing to note is that another thing to note here is that the control H K or control H V or control H F are all very localized, right? They're the definitions of functions and variables currently, right? So if we switch back to grep mode and I hit enter twice again, <clears throat> now if I type control H V next error function, then it says its value is compilation next error function. So if I type control H F, now we can see what's going on here. And one thing that you can do just to make sure that that's happening is you could put like a little printf statement or like message statement here that says, hey, we're in compilation next error function. So the way that I would do that personally is go control meta a to go to the top level of the function, control space to set the mark, and then control meta E to go to the end of the function and then meta W to copy it. And then let's go back to our scratch buffer and control Y to paste that. And then we can just type, do something like message 
in compilation next error function. Okay, and then if we go to the very end of this and type control X E to evaluate it, and then go back to our grep buffer and hit enter, <clears throat> it's not showing up down here at the very bottom. Fortunately, there is a messages buffer that has a list of all of the messages that have been displayed. So you can see here it says in compilation next error function. And <clears throat> that means that we actually do call that function. So that's nice to know. Okay, so let's go back to compile compilation next error function. Okay, so we're still looking for, right, what's actually displaying this, this buffer, right? <clears throat> So you can see here the documentation says advance to the next error message and visit the file where the error was. This is the value of next error function in compilation buffers. So grep mode is based on compilation mode. That's a good sign. We're on the right track. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got to figure out what in here is actually doing the displaying of the buffer, right? <clears throat> So if we read this, it's when reset. So reset is one of the parameters that you can pass. It's optional. Set to compilation current error nil. They're figuring out some columns, setting some locations probably. <clears throat> compilation current error to point marker. We're setting that. Then we're doing something with the current buffer. Okay, sorry, had a, had a phone call. <clears throat> but, okay, so they're figuring out something with screen columns. And then uh, there's this compilation go to locus marker. So <clears throat> what you can do essentially is just type control H F or control H control H F usually is what you want because you're looking for functions really not variables type control H F on a lot of these and eventually you'll see this one and it says jump to an error corresponding to message at mark at M yeah. So that seems like that might be a, a good candidate. And if we go to this compilation go to locus, <clears throat> you can see show compilation buffer in other window, scroll to this error. So that's exactly what <clears throat> I'm trying to prevent, essentially. So. <clears throat> You can see a little farther down, if the compilation buffer window was selected, keep the compilation buffer in this window, display the source in another window, right? <clears throat> so it looks like this is where they actually are changing the behavior based on what you, like where you're calling this function from. Right? So maybe if we just make sure that this is always false, it'll always display it in the same window. So the way that you make something false, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this function again, go back to our scratch buffer, yank it, and <clears throat> If we set this just unequivocally to false, then maybe that will work. Okay, 
So let's go back to our grep buffer. And if we hit enter, now it pulls it up just in the same window, which is exactly what we want to have happen. So <clears throat> the next thing to figure out essentially is, okay, how do we get this to happen by default? <clears throat> and the way that I did that was essentially, if we go back to our hooks buffer, I just have a, I just added a hook to <clears throat> the grep mode hook. So every time I enter grep mode, I define compilation go to locus to be my version where from compilation buffer is just always false. And uh, that gives me the default behavior that I want. <clears throat> You'll also note if we go back to grep and type control HK in, in runs the command next error no select. <clears throat> and uh, so essentially sometimes I'll hit in and P in the compilation buffer to go to the next or the previous error and that will still split things. So <clears throat> if I have this bound to next error instead of next error no select or previous error no select, everything works fine or works how I want it to. So <clears throat> this is obviously, this walkthrough obviously happens a lot faster than it did for me in real time figuring this out. <clears throat> but one of the things that <clears throat> you can do to learn more is there's an Emacs list introduction that comes with the documentation that's good to read at least a little bit of just so that you have an idea of how Emacs Lisp works. And <clears throat> that and uh, Googling or DuckDuckGoing things is another <clears throat> good way to find solutions, but if you really do have to program something or modify the source code, you should have an idea of what's going on in Emacs Lisp. Read the documentation <clears throat> for any customization options as well, and uh, you should be able to make Emacs do whatever you want it to do. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit dislike. In either case, leave a comment down below letting me know why. And also, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, leave a comment for those as well. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.